I'd made a um, kind of a walkthrough of how to go about deploying a uh, personal website um, built off like just a normal static, um, you know, templating, blog templating uh, tool. And I'd, I'd made it and figured this might be a, a good opportunity for, for folks who are excited about IPFS, want to um, get involved put it, putting their own website or creating a really easy static personal web page um, for the D-Web and get it up on IPFS. So just see what that process is. It's like, I don't know, 20 slides of like point and click. Um, I thought it'd be, it'd be a fun place for, for people to see that. Awesome. So here is my handy dandy little walkthrough on deploying your personal website using Forestry, Hugo, Fleek, and IPFS. Um, the real main heavy lifters in this are Forestry and Fleek. Um, and uh, starting with Forestry, this is kind of how you go about, uh, it's a, a great tool that you can use for um, finding kind of static website templates. Um, and so it's really, really easy. You hop over there, click start, select a starter template. Um, you can filter by like, you know, which, which of the many things you want to use. There's many options. I chose Hugo um, just because we, we use Hugo a lot for various different IPFS websites and chose one of their um, kind of portfolio starter templates. Um, the nice thing about these is that, um, you know, it's all, it's all static and, um, you know, you can preview it, you can decide if you like it, um, and then you can copy it to GitHub. And so voila, I got the copy of the Hugo Forestry template in GitHub. Um, the one like little trick with, with Hugo and um, putting Hugo sites up on IPFS is to make sure that you have relative links. And so um, the most important piece here is hopping into the, the config file and making sure you add relative URLs equal true. Um, and this will, will make your Hugo um, site work really well on IPFS by default. Um, so little one line change to the config um, and this will be ready to go. Um, you can preview it, run it locally. Voila, here's my um, local machine running this, you know, kind of, <laughs> this is now like three clicks, I think. And I have uh, a local version of the little static website that I'm gonna wanna launch on IPFS. Um, from here, now, I, now that I have a, um, a static version, I wanna get it up on IPFS. For that, I used Fleek, since Fleek is super, super easy from a UX perspective. And if the aim here is to make this as accessible to kind of uh, people who are getting started as possible, um, that's a great example. Um, they actually literally have a guide for using Hugo and Fleek with each other. Um, it's really useful. The, um, the Definitely take a look at that because it has the one um, kind of little trick you need to do in terms of setting your build settings. Um, but for me, I'd already deployed previous sites with Fleek. And so I was able to just sign in, um, connect this to my GitHub, choose the repo that Forestry had already created for me with, um, with my Hugo template in it, um, select that. And um, then I was kind of pretty much ready to go. The one trick I had to do here was instead of using the normal Hugo build command, um, I had to remember this blog post that I looked at and change my build command um, to uh, kind of submodule update init. Um, and this is just making sure that, uh, that this thing compiles and shows as a website instead of as like the straight up um, files within Hugo. Um, so that's the one special trick you need to, do, to know with Hugo and Fleek. Um, from there was super easy, just modified this um, and click deploy site. It took like, I think it was like a minute and a half of deploying um, to, to Hugo and voila, I was able to then go and verify it um, on, on Fleek that it was running and voila, here I am fetching this from, from Fleek's gateway where Fleek is hosting this um, on IPFS and, and I'm able to fetch it from, from them um, and I can navigate around, go to the blog, portfolio, um, other pieces, other pages of this website. Um, now I can also go in and view it more directly on IPFS. And so here, here I actually am grabbing the IPFS URL for this instead of um, kind of viewing it from, from their gateway, I'm viewing it on the IPFS.io gateway. Um, and so the, I can turn on my local companion node and um, configure this. And then I'm able to actually load it via my um, local IPFS node. And this was actually before I'd updated to IPFS 0.5. So that changes around these URLs a little bit to put the, the QM part at the front and the local host part at the back. Um, but here I actually have like an IPFS enabled local node and uh, success. 
within like, I don't know how many clicks that was. I think I should go back and count. It's like 20 or so. And we're like a one line text or two lines of text entry. Um, you're able to go from static, static site creation to running it on IPFS. Um, and so definitely, uh, it's, it, I think that officially qualifies it as at the point that like easy enough for uh, anyone who wants to deploy anything on the web to uh, jump over and use uh, these sorts of tools and plug them together really easily to get up and running. Um, and there's a lot of other examples of people who are jumping into the space. Um, the the deep blog is I think another example of how quick and easy it can be. Um, Unstoppable Domains also has um, kind of template websites for getting up and running on the deep website. Um, and so lots of different ways to, to do this, but I thought this was uh, particularly slick and, and easy to plug these two tools together with each other.